All right, so once you've got your test foam done, and um, this has been done by using a pencil to push into the areas that you would plan to carve out when you have your lino block, okay? It's not gonna be perfect, but it's going to give you an idea of what your print's gonna look like before we start with a lino block because the lino blocks are more expensive and if you mess up, you can't really go back can't glue back lino once you've carved it out. So this is going to act as our sort of inexpensive way to make sure it's gonna look like the way we want to. You'll see I have this black uh, plate here and it's been marked out with some tape by the last class. And that's to help you to get your foam or your lino into the right spot. It allows for a little bit of a border around it and as you're adding paper, that way the paper is always going into the right spot. There's a few other things you kind of need to know the tools for. Um, does anyone know what these are called? Rollers, there's another name for them. They're called brayers, okay, brayers. So there's two different sizes. There's the little size and there's the larger size, okay? Generally speaking, we use the larger size to actually print the paper on top of the ink. We use the smaller size to ink the plate, okay? Um, your ink comes in a bottle like this. They haven't been used for a year, so you're gonna have to give them a shake. Um, and then they just squeeze out, okay? Through the squeeze bottle top. You will not need very much ink Okay, generally, a good rule is to just do a line across the top of your plate, your inking plate. That's what this is called. And I see some people who are not looking up here, so I really need you to pay attention. I'm not going to show you this again. So you do a line of ink across the top. And then the next step is to spread the ink out around this plate so that we get it evenly onto the roller. So you'll notice I went into the ink, and now I'm picking it up and rolling it towards me. So it's very similar to like when we're working with clay and we wanna make a coil. We need to pick it up and drag it towards us to get all sides of this roller covered with ink. Pardon? No, the, the roller is rubber and this is a plexiglass plate, okay? You'll notice it's starting to make a clicking sound. You hear that? That sticky sound of the ink? Okay, once you, now I see on my roller, there's a spot that doesn't have ink. So I need to like get that spot inked. So once the whole thing is covered evenly, you can start going back and forth a little bit, but you still wanna pick it up every once in a while to make sure it's even all the way around. And that one little spot is being super stubborn. So I really gotta get it on there. Still not getting ink on it. I don't know why this one spot doesn't want to get ink on it. So I just am checking all the way around. I don't know. I'm going to give up on that spot just for our test. But you can see there's ink all the way around my roller, and it's got a little bit of stickiness to it. Okay, there's a reason for that. That actually prevents us getting too much ink onto our um, printing surface. Okay, so once you've got the ink all nicely on your brayer, we never add ink on top of our printing press. We're going to call this our printing press. Okay, we want to use the newspaper. So you'll notice I've got newspaper covering my whole surface here. So I keep my space nice and clean. You want to want, also want to try to keep your fingers really clean. So I had get, gotten some ink on my fingers. I would keep a paper towel probably next to me, wet paper towel so my fingers aren't getting dirty, and you'll see why in a second. So I've got my um, I've got my foam here ready to ink. So on the newspaper, I'm just gonna roll one layer of ink. I don't want to get too much ink, but I do have to go over it a couple times until I see that there aren't any areas of white that shouldn't be white okay then very carefully using the edges of my fingers i'm going to pick it up and put it into my printing press 
okay, trying not to get my fingers dirty because now all of a sudden I'm gonna touch my paper. I don't wanna get little ink spots on my paper. So for your test, it's okay. I just want you to keep that in mind when we do our good copy. So for our test, we're gonna use newsprint and we drop it into our printing press so that it hits the back and then we line it up with the lines that we've got on the tape and we allow it to just fall on top of the foam. Okay, that's to prevent it from moving around. Once it's there, we don't touch it. That's it, you can't adjust it because you've already gotten ink on it. Now we need to print it. So we use a clean brayer, okay, one with no ink on it, this larger one. And you can just use your fingers to kind of like keep it in place while you get started. But you're gonna roll on top and back. And that should be all you need, okay? Then we're gonna carefully peel the print off and we can see how it turned out, okay? So now Dominic can figure out, is this what he wants? Does he want to change anything about this design, right? It doesn't give you exactly what it's going to look like, but it gives you a good idea. Do I want more positive space, more negative space? Are there some more details I'd want to carve out in my lino block, okay? And the ink is water soluble, so you can actually run this right under the sink and it will just wash right off. Same thing with the brayer. Um, and if you would like to just keep this foam and your test print in your sketchbooks, you can just tape those in. It's the exact same process when you do your good copy prints. You would just do multiples, so you wouldn't stop at one. You would keep going until you see you have a print without any unintended areas of, you know, markings or ink that hasn't transferred, etc. So I'm going to leave this here today for you to try out.